and we just opened up the investigation in uh, February of 2010, late 2009, early 2010. Uh, the Army put a request in to build a command structure at Camp Leatherneck uh, in southern Afghanistan. Uh, within months, a uh, decision was made that the Army wasn't going to be in Camp Leatherneck. Uh, the Marines were going to be there. The Marine General took a look at the plans, said, I don't want it, I don't need it, I won't use it, stop it. So he said that in May. Uh, uh, what year again? Remind May us. of 2010. Okay. And then uh, the process just continues, and that's what we find out. Once you appropriate money, it gets spent. So even though he didn't want it as early as 2010, uh, they let the contract in 2011, and they started building it. And uh, what we eventually have now, it was turned over to the military commander now, a building that's almost totally complete, cost $35 million, and nobody wants it. Well, and we were just showing our viewers some pictures of it. Yeah. Uh, 64,000 square feet. That's big building. <laughs> $34 million accommodates 1,200 to 1,500 staff and includes a war room, a briefing theater, and senior military official offices. That's correct. So it, it went, they went ahead and built it. Why couldn't the Navy just use it? I mean, they said, well, we don't want it, but why not? They don't need it. Uh, the commander didn't need it. Uh, the Marine Corps captain had his own, or excuse me, Marine Corps commander had it all, his own headquarters, didn't want it. It's a uh, rather uh, luxurious Taj Mahal, and he didn't want it. So before the first shovel went into the ground, the Marine Corps commander who was running the uh, uh, mission down there said, I don't want it. So don't it, build it. So is there already a command headquarters for there the Navy is. close by? Uh, for the Marine Corps, yes, yes. And it's not as uh, well made as this one. The Marines are pretty good at dealing with uh, plywood and sandbags. They're very happy with that and it serves its purpose. So um, who said we're gonna ignore the Navy and, and go ahead and build it? We don't know. That's what our investigation is all about. We're gonna try to find out who the individual was who ignored the Marine uh, Corps General and uh, continued with the construction. So. What, what is Congress saying about this? His comment is, I'm just making a quick withdrawal. Sadly, too, uh, behind him is an American soldier whose thoughts are this. I would like to make a quick withdrawal from here. I would close by saying, Mr. Speaker, it is time for this Congress to wake up and take care of America's problems and not Afghanistan's problems. A 10-year agreement is unacceptable, and we need to come together in a bipartisan way and send a message to the administration. We do not support this agreement, and we come together, Republicans and Democrats. I close by asking God to please continue to bless our men and women in uniform, and ask God to please continue to bless America, and I yield back the balance of my time. Well, we've gotten a number of letters and comments from Congress but uh, expressing outrage, but I haven't uh, had any direct communications with anybody. I'm hoping that uh, Senator McCaskill's staff uh, has contacted about this. She's having a hearing tomorrow, and I think this may be one of the topics of discussion at tomorrow's hearing. Because of sequestration, not because we cut your money, but because based on a risk assessment, you decided, you know, we're going to have to pay off the bad guys to do this, or there's no way they can sustain this, or this is a bad idea because, you know, a water park in Iraq, you know, which is now crumbling and, you know, or the, the power grid in an area that's going to get blown up. I need, to, I, need, I need some success stories here. I need you to tell me some places you've done that. And I will promise you this. If you can bring me some success stories where you've cut off projects because you've appropriately evaluated both risk and sustainability, I will make you the stars of my website for as long as you want to be up there. I will herald you and, and you know, I will actually send you balloon bouquets. What is the executive branch saying about it? The president, the Pentagon? Uh, they're looking into it. Is, is, is there any war in this region, in the entire region, that we can afford to ever finally leave? You know, I, I, I don't want to speak outside the lane of, you know, my particular portfolio stretches from Egypt up through Iraq and Iran down to down right, Can we afford to leave Egypt? Can we afford to leave Libya? Can we afford to leave anywhere? I think that we have profound national interest in this part of the world, countering weapons of mass destruction, countering violent extremism, energy security, the safety and security of Israel and our other strategic partners. Uh, so I think we are heavily invested in this part of the world. We have a sizable presence in this part of the world. We are likely to remain postured 
uh, at, a, at a pretty high level, even as we draw down from Iraq. So I don't know whether the question is ever, but we are... Draw down means forward. five to seven years and billions of dollars. You, you start multiplying that across a region where everything is five to seven years. That's going to shift to five to seven years by the time we get to six years. And it's going to cost more billions of dollars. I'm not advocating leaving this place yet, uh, you know, but I, I just want to know because of the lack of an answer to my first question, if there's nobody in charge of selling it, nobody's going to buy it.